So here we are, it's winter time again, and typically many of us leisure and fitness cyclists lose fitness over this winter off season period. But it doesn't have to be like that. Today, I'm going to tell you how you can hang on to your fitness. How familiar does this sound? You work really hard in the spring and the summer to get fit on the bike, and then along comes the autumn and the winter and you lose it all again. The main culprits are the weather and the darker evenings. And here in the UK, we put our clocks back about two weeks ago so that by about four o'clock in the afternoon, it's dark enough that you'll need lights. But what if I were to tell you that there was a way that you could reclaim a couple of hours every day so that you could slow down that inevitable crawl towards square one fitness and you can prevent yourself from becoming a complete sack of custard in early January, thanks to all of the festive food and drink that you've been enjoying. The obvious answer is to go out and cycle during the hours of darkness. Now, I know for us leisure and fitness cyclists, that does hold quite a lot of fear. Basically, it's a fear of the unknown and also a fear that it might not be quite as safe as riding during the hours of daylight. Some people don't really have a choice, particularly those that commute to and from work. For them, riding home in the dark is just part of the job. One thing to note here about cycling after dark is that you probably won't want to go out and do your usual three, four hour rides. It's just not really practical. But if you can go out and do one and a half hours or two hours once or twice a week, that will work absolute wonders for your on the bike fitness. The first piece of advice I would give is to choose your route carefully. Now you have basically two choices here. You can either ride in an urban area and the advantages of that would be that they're already pre-lit with street lights and even the passing cars will help you see your way. But then obviously there is a bit more traffic. The other choice is to ride in the country. And while there might not be quite as much traffic going about, it will be pretty dark. The other thing to think about when you're cycling in the countryside is that you may come face to face with some of the wildlife. Now here in the UK, that wildlife is going to be things like ranging in size from hedgehogs, rabbits, foxes, badger and deer. It all sounds a little bit Walt Disney. And the chances are that these animals probably won't pose a direct threat to your safety. You might come into collision with one, and that could be pretty bad, but uh, the risk of one of those animals attacking you is pretty slim. Now, I do realize that the people watching this vlog aren't limited to the UK here, and you may have some other animals that are considerably bigger, and more importantly, have uh, larger teeth and larger fangs that could be a bit of a problem. So you kind of have to uh, use a bit of discretion there. One of the things that's going to make a massive difference to your night cycling is of course, investing in a good quality set of lights. Not only will they need to be bright enough so that you can see where you're going, they'll also need to be bright and clear enough so that other road users can see you. Over the years, I've reviewed quite a few sets of bike lights, usually from companies like Olight and Magic Shine, and they make fantastic bike lights. They're super bright, completely rechargeable, and I would thoroughly, thoroughly recommend investing in a set. You can find the reviews on this channel, and there'll also be a link to the companies and where to buy them in the description below this vlog. The other thing that's going to make a huge difference to your night cycling is clothing. Now, if the weather's cold and wet, of course, that clothing will need to keep you warm and dry, but it's also very, very important that that clothing has some uh, reflective detailing on it. Now, you could go all reflective, or you could go down the route of this electron jacket from Altura. 
Now, as you can probably see, it's got some LED lighting in it, and that's both at the front and at the back here. Plus, of course, it also has that reflective detailing in so that when the uh, lights and the headlights from the cars shine on it, the drivers can see that as well. Being visible is the key to night cycling. And once you've got your reflective jacket and the lights, you could probably even go all the way with some lights on your helmet as well. A couple of weeks ago, I tested out a Lival Evo 20 helmet that had some lighting built in. And of course, that's just going to offer some extra visibility when you're out and about at night. Obviously, you're not going to want to wear your cycling sunglasses at night, but you will still need some kind of eye protection from all of the flying insects and the grit that gets thrown up from the road. I would recommend a pair of clear glasses uh, and you can use anything you like, including even things like safety glasses from builders merchants or this pair that I picked up from Decathlon for just a few pounds. If you think about it, there are exactly the same number of hours during the day, regardless of the season. So there's still 24 hours in spring, summer, autumn and winter. Depending on your normal routine, it's probably fairly reasonable to expect that you come home in the evening and then you might go out at six, seven o'clock at night and go for a quick little hour, two hour spin and think nothing of it. You've left the house in the daylight and you've returned in the daylight. The timings aren't any different. The only difference is that in the winter and the autumn, when you go out, it's going to be dark. So you, should, you can still take advantage of those rides and they can still benefit you with fitness. Now, one of the great things about cycling at night is that it is like a little mini adventure. You're out and about in your own little pool of light and yeah, it's, it's absolutely fantastic once you get used to it. One of the other advantages, of course, is if you can't see the hills coming, then you can't fear them. And you kind of just breeze up them a little bit easier than you would if you were looking up them and thinking, blimey, that's a toughie. So there we go. That's your step-by-step -step guide to reclaiming a couple of extra hours so that you can maintain your winter fitness over the autumn and the winter. If you'd like some more tips about how to get the most out of your cycling, please click on the video coming up in the end screen. But in the meantime, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.